Hi everyone, Barbara Rankin here with another Color Art Video Creator tutorial to share. Lately I've been purging my supplies and I came across some items that I thought would add some great texture to a mixed media canvas. I found some thumbtacks, some old buttons, and even some broken pieces I had made from plaster on a texture sheet. Some of these things are quite old, but I'm pretty sure if you don't have the same exact things, you can find something similar in your own craft studio. So let's get started. I placed a piece of cardboard inside the back of my canvas for support, but this is optional. I also maneuvered it so that it would not cause any unsightly ridges during the painting process. So one of the things I found are these thumbtacks. I have quite a few and so I decided to add them to the perimeter of an 8x10 canvas. I just used a ruler to measure and place them from the center of each side at 1 inch intervals. Then I placed the corner thumbtacks just inside each corner. It doesn't matter what color your thumbtacks are because they will be covered with gesso. I also found a bunch of buttons, like maybe a gazillion of them, so I glued them down already. Once again, it doesn't matter what they look like or what color they are because they will be covered with gesso. This is going to be my focal image. It's a resin piece I got from Hobby Lobby in their home decor section, and I made a couple of plaster wings using this new mold from Prima, which is now available in Michaels. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down and when the glue dries, I'll be back again. Use whatever glue you have or gel medium, but I really prefer my quick grab tacky glue. I also found this large key that I recently purchased from Hobby Lobby in their jewelry section. And I have some 20 gauge wire in a gray color that I want to wrap around the stem of the key. So I'm just going to cut a piece off and uh, start wrapping it around. And I'm going to try to keep the ends on the bottom portion of the key so that when I glue it down, uh, you won't see them or get stabbed by them. The wrapping doesn't have to be perfect unless that's what you like. Do what you like and don't worry, there are no rules. I can tell the key isn't going to lay flat against the resin piece, so instead of putting the glue on the key, I just put a thick line of glue down the middle of the resin piece. And I'm just placing a piece of foam that was laying on my desk beneath the top of the key to hold it in place while the glue dries. Okay, some of the glue is still drying. My key is still not dry, and so I can't really gesso it yet. So while I'm waiting, I have a few plaster pieces I made earlier from a honeycomb texture sheet. These were actually molded on the reverse side of the honeycomb sheet, so it looks more like a sheet of dots rather than a honeycomb. The pieces actually started breaking as I was removing them from the sheet, but that was okay with me. I wouldn't have wanted to use an entire sheet on a canvas anyway. I actually prefer the irregular shapes. Because the pieces are quite uneven on the back, I'm going to use some modeling paste to adhere them to the background. This will allow me to level them as I place each one down. I'm going to speed it up a bit, but all I'm doing is applying the modeling paste to the back of the plaster pieces and squishing them down into the paste. If too much paste squishes out, you can leave it as is, or you can spread it out some, or just remove it completely with your spatula or your finger but leaving it just adds more texture. Just keep adding pieces until you like the look, and don't worry if you think something doesn't look right. There are more layers to come. One last thing I want to do before I leave it overnight to dry is add some deco art crackle paste in some of those areas in and around the plaster pieces. 
Okay, I'm going to speed up the video again, but all I'm doing is spreading the crackle paste in random thick and thin layers where the canvas is showing. And this will ultimately give us a variation in the size of the cracks we get. We will have some thin and some thick cracks as determined by the thickness of the paste that we lay down. And as you can see, I'm not being careful at all to keep the paste off of the embellishments. Okay, here's what it looks like now. It looks pretty much like a hot mess. But when it dries, you're going to have lots of crackles and lots of texture. And it's going to be fabulous. Okay, I let this sit overnight and let me give you a quick look at it close up. You can see all those heavy duty crackles that have popped up. So now I want to cover everything with a coat of white gesso. I'm using Liquitex gesso, but any gesso will work. This will not only make everything the same color, but also prime it to take the paints better. I will even coat the resin pieces that are already white to seal them so they won't suck up much of my paints. And as I go over the crackled parts, I will do more of a dry brushing so that I don't fill the cracks with gesso. We want to keep those intact. I've chosen five silks colors. I have Emperor's Gold, Orange Peel, Olive Vine, Pretty Peridot, and Moss Green. I probably won't use all those greens, but for now I'm going to, to paint the background with the Olive Vine. I'm using a stiff bristled mixed media brush because it will allow me to scrub the paint into and around all those textures. And I can also use it to remove excess paint from the cracks if I get too much into them. You may also notice that I will continue to move the canvas around. This allows me to see anything that I may have missed. And now I'm covering the canvas edges to give a more finished look. Now I'm going to lighten the center with some Emperor's Gold Silks. I will feather it out as I get to the edges so I can leave the darker olive vine border. Next, I'm adding orange peel silks. And again, I will be feathering the color outward towards the edge, leaving some of the gold area showing. I'm also adding some of that same orange color to the fleur-de-lis and the wings. Now I'm adding solar gold silks to the center portion. This will have, add even more brightness to the center. Occasionally I'll hit the wings and the fleur-de-lis with my dry brush after most of the paint has been applied to the canvas and has pretty much removed, been removed from my paintbrush. By now you probably think I'm crazy going back and forth with the colors, but I want to bring an even darker orange into the center. The Jasper Red is a coppery brown color and it will give some extra warmth and depth to the piece. All the previous layers add to this layer, so when it comes to mixed media, and I know you've heard this before, but it really is all about the layers. 
If you leave a color layer out, will the results be the same? Probably not. But I know that you can keep adding your layers until you get, the, get it to where you like the result. No rules, just good fun. I'm also dry brushing some of this color over the wings and fleur-de-lis after most of the paint is out of my brush. Now I'm going to use Siam White Vivid to hit the high spots on all the texture on both the canvas background and the embellishments. The wet paint is reacting with the uncured silks acrylic and turning the colors more pastel. And it helps intensify the textures too. I'm going to let this coat dry before I add any more layers. Now I'm going to apply some Stargazer silks to the wings. This will give them that sort of a blue cast and I think it also looks like a, a green patina on it. Next I'm going to take the Jasper Red Silks again and I'm going to apply a nice coat to the Fleur de Lis. Now you can see how my focal images are showing up better since I knocked back the background with the Siam White Vivid. Now I'm using a damp baby wipe to remove some of the paint and reveal the details on the Fleur de Lis and I'll do the same on the wings. Now I'm going to start working on my final embellishments. So I have three metal bead charms. I'm going to use some China Black Vivid Ultra Metallic to cover each one and I'll let the paint dry. Now I'm using a wet baby wipe to remove the excess paint on the surface, leaving much of the black paint in the crevices or details of the bees. I'm using the Treasure Gold Wax in Classic Gold and applying it with my finger to the details on both the Fleur de Lis and the wings. You really want a very small amount of the wax on your finger for the very best results. I have a bit of gold wax left on my finger and I'm applying it to the top of the key. Now I'm ready to add my remaining embellishments. I like to use Fast Grab Tacky Glue for this. I will speed up the video so you can watch the process or you can fast forward through it. I will have some still photos of the finished canvas at the end of the video. I decided to keep the white flowers white, so in order to make them work, I decided to add tiny dots of pearl drops around my focal image using this Texture Gems Metallic Gel Liner from Faber-Castell. Just adding a bit of white elsewhere on the canvas makes this work.
For more inspiration, you can find me on these social media links. And if you enjoyed today's project video, please give me a thumbs up, and I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and always take time to play.